One of the biggest questions I've got over the years and one of the biggest questions you guys have had for me is why am I no longer in law enforcement? In this video, I'm gonna attempt to answer that question for you. Now, right off the bat, I'll tell you, this is a very difficult question for me to answer. There are a lot of reasons, there are a lot of experiences I had that motivated me to no longer pursue a career in law enforcement. And I can only speak to my experience and what I saw and close friends, what they told me uh, they experienced as well. This isn't to say that I don't like the job. I would potentially do that job again. And I loved being a cop. In fact, I miss it a lot. So maybe in this video, I can sum it up for some of you guys who are in law enforcement, considering getting out, or maybe you're considering getting into law enforcement, and this will help you make a little bit of a better, more informed decision on what you could experience if you got in. In summary, politics, bureaucracy, corruption, complacency, and a very self-destructive, toxic culture made it very difficult for me to continue in that workplace. Me leaving had nothing to do with dealing with the general public or responding to calls or really anything that had to do with the job itself. It had everything to do with the workplace I was in and my employers. So the first reason I want to talk about with you guys is the toxic culture that exists in at least the agencies I worked for. There was constant gossip, backstabbing, rumors, unethical, immoral stuff with a lot of the officers and a lot of the administration that I worked with. One of the things that you would have to work very hard at is tiptoeing around people's egos. I felt like I was constantly in the spotlight, like people were constantly watching me, looking at me, criticizing me on everything I did. People were vindictive a lot of the times. People were very overcritical. In many cases, it was to make themselves look good or to make you look bad, to use you as a scapegoat or whatever the case was. I can remember a particular time where I went in for my first evaluation and I got a needs improvement on my evaluation. And I didn't really feel like a needs improvement was justified. So I actually talked to my supervisor about this and they basically told me that it's not fair to give me a satisfactory evaluation because I'm new. And if I am a new person and I get a satisfactory or an above satisfactory evaluation, that it may make more senior people look bad. One of the other things I want to mention about the culture is a saying that was constantly told to me, perception is reality. So there were a lot of times, I can remember one instance with a, a Facebook picture, somebody posted a picture and it looked like it was me. And I remember my reputation took a hit for that, even though it was a post that had nothing to do with me that somebody at the department said was me that wasn't. And I didn't have one at the time. Perception is reality. So I paid, essentially, for whatever some random person posted on their Facebook. Reason number two is apathy within a department and politics. As you can imagine, there's always an agenda to be pushed. The department is always trying to create a certain image for itself. There's an example of when an administration came up with a plan to reduce burglaries in the city. And they really needed this plan to be successful to make them all look really good with city council and management and whoever else, for whatever reason. And when they implemented this program, they also changed the reporting protocol that on certain calls, under certain circumstances, we no longer reported them as burglaries. They were now a vandalism and a theft. So essentially, they're lying 
to artificially reduce these stats in our city to show that their program is working when in fact it had little to no effect on actual crime rates. They used these same types of techniques when it came to how they treated their officers. And this was a really hard pill for me to swallow. I was in denial for a very long time. Departments don't really care about their officers. They will turn on you in an instant and everybody will abandon you. That happened to me. They would tell us how they really care about us and how if we're having a hard time, there's resources available and we can get time off. And they told me that staffing is their problem and not mine. And that if I need days off, I just need to ask. Well, I took them up on that offer a few months later and I worked about 10, 16 hour shifts in a row and I was really burnt out. And I said, look, I wanna take about a week off. I, I really need to recharge my batteries. I am burnt, I am not sleeping well. Um, I'm just, I'm having a really hard time right now. And it took a lot for me to be that honest with my sergeant at the time. And they stood up and said, well, you know, that happens in this job and this job's not for everybody, buddy. And basically they reminded me how vulnerable my job was. And I said, you know what, Never mind." Reason number three is corruption and the bureaucracy. The amount of times I seen police departments lie, not only in the examples I've already been given, but in plenty of other times when I've seen officers or, or departments lie about things is pretty frightening considering the short amount of time I was actually in law enforcement. There were times Officers would get pulled into in internal investigations that were proactive. The department was hunting for officers doing stuff and trying to find things. And the internal affairs investigators would determine that the officers were lying purely on speculation, purely on a hunch, with no evidence. I was actually involved in two IAs where that happened. And there's a lot that goes into talking about the two IAs I was involved in but the short version is I was accused of lying. They initially sustained that I was lying. There were multiple people from the administration that lied during that investigation. They also lied to certain people in order to get them to say certain things. They also didn't include evidence that would have exonerated me that I tried to provide them with, and they also didn't include my polygraph exam, which I passed. They didn't want to consider that. It, I was told that polygraphs are unreliable, and so we're not going to include it. And eventually, they overturned mine, and uh, they were both unfounded, and I went to work for another agency. Reason number four is the role of law enforcement and the role of the government. Now, most of this for me happened after I left my last agency. I left for some personal reasons to help out family at the time with the intention to go back into law enforcement. And eventually I chose not to go back into it. I was uh, gonna be gone for about a year. And during that time, I was also starting a family and I decided to do a lot of studying. Up until that point, I had never fully read the constitution or much less the Bill of Rights. I knew certain things, I knew certain case law, but there's a lot of stuff I didn't know and a lot of case law I didn't know and a lot of processes on how laws were made and how they were implemented that I didn't know. And now that I know that and I look at things, I see really how far the government has abused the authority that it was given, how unconstitutional so much stuff is. If, if you ask an officer today what a right is, many of them will describe to you a privilege because that's what they were trained and that's what they honestly believe a right is. And we suffer from over-regulation and I, I was pressured at some of these agencies. I was, I was pressured with quotas. I was pressured to write tickets. I was told in a meeting to write certain type of tickets so that the department can generate revenue. I was told to make false arrests on three different occasions. To finish this video off, I, I had some terrible experiences working for governments and working for agencies. But again, I loved the job. 
Today, law enforcement is very different than what it's supposed to be. To me, law enforcement is a very sacred, honorable job. It's about showing up to a scene on the worst day of somebody's life and being the voice of calm, being comfort for them, being hope for them, and bringing justice where there is injustice, righting wrongs that happen in a society, fixing damage that's happened. And it's not only about serving those victims of crimes, it's also about stopping the bad guys too. It's about taking those abusers off the street and stopping them from creating more victims. There are some people out there who are pure evil, but I would say most of the criminals that I took to jail were regular human beings that were broken, traumatized, lost, and they deserve respect too. There's one particular time where I can remember I spoke with somebody for a long time while I was doing my report, taking them to jail, booking them, and I could remember what they said to me. They thanked me for arresting them. They thanked me for being so professional and treating them with respect. And they said they could not believe they were in jail right then. They felt like they were honestly at a bar talking to a friend, and that meant a lot to me. Even though I was arresting this person, I. I didn't look down upon them. It's, it's my job, and I think it was the right thing to do to take that person to jail that day. I tried to build a rapport with a lot of the people I would take to jail, and I tried to plant seeds in their minds to make them become better and improve society and help them to heal from their past and show them some respect. Not everybody needs to be kicked when they're down already. And that's what it's about. As a law enforcement officer, you are supposed to be a role model and an example to people and do the right thing. Do the right thing every day. I hope this was a useful video for you guys. If you have questions, let me know. Stay safe out there and God bless.